Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. Why did I choose an electric tankless water heater for this house instead of a gas tankless or a traditional tank version? And why might I not make the same decision again today in 2019? Let's find out today on Smith House. So to understand why I made the decision I made, you gotta understand two things about this house. First is the geographical location and second is sort of my mindset when I was building it. So the geographical location, we are a long way away from anybody. We don't have natural gas run here. We didn't even have electrical ran out to this property before we moved here. We had to bring a new line all the way in. So we are remote and that leads to the second thing about where my mind was at. This was right after a major hurricane when we started building this house. It was right after a major hurricane that hit Houston and people were out of power for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, a little bit over in some cases. And the rural people got their power last, right? Because you satisfy most of your customers if you bring power back to the heavily populated areas and the customers further out, there's just less and less people, so they take a back seat. So we're way out here on the back seat of priority. So I wanted to be able to be energy independent. So I built this house very energy efficient and I kept everything on electric. That way I could easily plug in a generator and run this whole thing for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and the house would function like a normal house. Eventually, I was wanting to put a PV array up on the roof to be able to start offsetting my costs with solar. I never got to that point, but that was my mindset. So when it came to doing a water heater, I wanted something electric, and the tanked electrics were just not that interesting to me, right? They're always using energy. You're always keeping that water hot. I've got a big family. I've got six people in my family, and so I'm gonna need a big tank, and that whole tank is going to keep hot all the time, whether we're here, whether we're on vacation, whatever. Yes, I know there's a bunch of different ones now with different modes and settings, but that's not who I am. I'll forget, I'll just walk out the door, and that hot water heater, the water heater, will continue to keep that water hot even when we're not using it. So a tankless makes perfect sense for that application. The second reason is we have this huge tub. I said, I want a tub that would fit a six foot four guy easily. So this is a huge bathtub. It holds nearly 80 gallons. Well, that drains a complete water heater. And if you need to use it for anything else that night, you're done. So I decided to go with a tankless version. So I went with a Stiebel Eltron Tempera 29 Plus, and this is where it gets cool. I have a whole water room on the back side, so my well's outside and I pipe the water in and the pressure tank is in a, not a conditioned space, but an insulated space that is right off of my main house. And then I run through all of my filters and my water softeners and I've got a place out there for traditional tanked water heater. But because it's so far away from the kitchen, which is right off of this mud room here, and even further from the kids' bedrooms, which is on the far side of the house, I would have to run water all the way from there, all the way over. And even if I did a home run system where I'm running really little pipes directly to the fixtures, it's gonna take a while for water to get over there. So I was thinking, could I put this in a more centrally located area? And here's what I did. I put it up here in a cabinet above the freezer in our mudroom. So the kitchen is right next door to us and it's a very short run over there. The master bath is across the way over here and the kids bath is down the way over there. So we're centrally located. And you see here we've got three 40 amp breakers running this thing. So that's a lot of power. In fact, you need at least a 200 amp service if you're gonna run the 29 like this. They do make smaller. If you don't have as much demand, you can go with a smaller unit and the electrical requirements are lower. But this one requires a 200 amp service because we've got three 40 amp breakers and when all three units kick on, it pulls a lot of power. And I wanna talk about all three units. So it has three heating elements in there, each powered by a 40 amp breaker. And what's cool about this is it's able to modulate. So if I turn on a shower, 
it's only going to kick on one, maybe two of these heating elements. If I kick on another shower, then we're definitely on two. By the time I kick on the third, now we're using all three of the heating elements. So we're using less power when there's less demand and more power when there's more demand. So not only am I efficient from the standpoint of I'm not using power when I don't need it, I'm also efficient because I'm only using as much power as I need when I need it. Now this is the Plus model, and the Plus has another feature that I don't really get, to be honest with you. It's called variable flow. What it does is if the output of water exceeds the capacity of the heater to heat that water, instead of letting water go out of the unit at a lower temperature than your set point, it will restrict the flow of water down to a point where the heater can keep up. So you have a constant temperature output. Now that would make sense if everybody was always using all of the fixtures at full hot. So if everybody turned on the showers at the full hot setting and it exceeded the output, then it's going to reduce the pressure, but everybody will still have hot water. So if you take showers like that, it's a good feature. I don't take showers like that. I have my set point on my heater up really hot because some days I want it really hot and sometimes I don't. So I regulate my temperature by mixing the hot and the cold. Well, as soon as you're mixing hot and cold together and the hot output in volume goes down, right? As soon as the flow drops on the hot side, your cold's unaffected and you're all of a sudden getting colder water anyway, even though the hot water is the same temperature because there's just less of it to mix together. So I don't really get that feature. I bought it because it's really not that much more expensive. And if you have the perfect set point, if your family all likes taking showers at exactly the same temperature and all of your appliances like the exact same hot water temperature coming in, then change your set point to that temperature, turn all of your faucets all the way hot when you want hot water, and it will regulate the flow and give everybody hot water at the same time. So the more you know, right? I really like this heater and I wouldn't probably do anything different if I did it again because of that bathtub. That bathtub's so large, it takes so much water to fill up. It just didn't make sense to have a tanked version drain into that bathtub and then wait for it to heat back up again. However, if I didn't have that huge bathtub and was doing the same thing today, I think I might look at getting a heat pump water heater. So what that does is it pulls the heat out of the air and it puts it into the water and they are super efficient. Yes, they are heating all of the time. So we still have that problem of your heating water that you might or might not use in X amount of time frame. But most of the high end heat pump water heaters have a lot of insulation on the tanks. You're not losing much through it. And they're just so much more efficient than this type of a heating element where you're heating the water at a very high energy for a very short time getting out. I like this unit. If it fits your needs, like it fit our needs at the time that we built it, highly recommend it. I'll put a link to it below. I'll also put a link to a heat pump unit that I really like so you can compare and contrast. And if you go buy something, I get a little bit of money back. So in full disclosure, those links are affiliate links below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any other questions, comment below. If you have a favorite water heater, comment below. If you say hot water heater instead of water heater, comment below. Like the video, subscribe if we've earned it, go follow us over on our social media accounts, and we'll see you next time on Smith House. Here comes the rain. So, if you're making fun of my fence building skills, I grew up on a farm and a ranch, and I know how to jerry-rig the heck out of stuff, so, this is my born calling, and there's an art to making something just good enough to pass for about one season. Too much in that and you're just doing overkill, you're a hobby farmer. If you can make it perfect, you don't know what you're doing. It's an art of just a little bit of skill, a whole lot of ingenuity, and a whole lot of, that's good enough. <laughs> That'll hold. That'll hold. Ha, ha, ha.